Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Stephanie's Laurelin. I'm Stephanie. Today's video is going to be another reading vlog. I know and it's going to be a reading vlog I'm really, really excited for because this is a book I haven't read yet. The other two vlogs have been rereads and I actually haven't read this book yet because it obviously just came out. So you, most of you probably know what I'm talking about. It's Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater. This came out, I think, almost two weeks ago now, um, on the 18th of May. It's now the 31st of May. So it's it's been a while since it came out. I never got the chance to actually read it because I was in school and did an exam. But I can read it now and I'm very, very, very excited too. So this vlog is going to be a spoiler filled reading vlog of me reading Mr. Impossible, the second book in the Dreamer trilogy by Maggie Steve Otter for the first time. So I hope you enjoy and yeah, let's just get reading. I'm so excited. I swear to God, I swear to God, <laughs> if Maggie Steve Otter makes Ronan and Adam break up, I will be very upset, very upset. It doesn't say anything like bad to suggest it, but basically at the end of the last book, Ronan texts Adam his like I love you thing, their I love you thing, where he says Tamquam and then the other replies with Alter Edom. And he sent a text Adam Tamquam and he got no reply. And it says um here that Adam hadn't replied at all. The silence sort of made this this being away easier. What do you feel? Confused. And I swear to God if they break up, mm mm. Nope. I refuse to believe that. So I'm on page 34 and Ronan and Hennessy and Bride are in this like um, abandoned museum and they're dreaming and it's just really funny because <laughs> Ronan's after like bringing back loads of stuff from his dreams and like making this whole room of the museum to fit with one of his dreams, if that makes sense. And Bride uh, and both Hennessy and Jordan are lying paralyzed because that's what happens to dreamers when they, after they dream and take something back from their dream. And Bride is literally just standing over Ronan, giving him a lecture while Ronan's paralyzed. And I just think it's so funny. What are you doing? So I'm on chapter five, page 54. And um, the end of chapter four was quite interesting. So basically Jordan's after leaving Declan and Matthew. And she's after going, she got an invite from Bo, Bo I think it's Bodega, Bodega. I don't know how to pronounce it. 
pronounce the name and um she went to one of those like her parties at the end of the party there's a dream and then they bring in this painting and the painting basically wakes the dreamer up not wakes the dream up so it's interesting because like that could be that could solve first off jordan being a dream and if hennessy, hennessy dies second matthew being a dream and yeah the other thing i want to say was it's the start of chapter five like i've said and it's our first chapter in matthew's point of view i'm very excited because i love matthew <laughs> a little bit of youtube if you saw that but i forgot to mention in the intro that a few days ago a friend gave me um a really nice rug and because i'm off school now for the summer i don't know if i told you that either but i'm done school i decided it would be a great idea to move my desk out of my room and instead now i have a little book reading nook a little reading nook like oh. updated what was happening in the story and if i explained what was happening but um i'm on page 98 so just at the 100 page mark go me bride and ronan and hennessy are at another ley line spot i don't know if i explained earlier but bride is bringing hennessy and ronan to all these ley line areas where the ley lines power is really strong for them to dream and he's basically trying to explain to them and show them that he's been trying to mend and repair these ley lines he's talking about this new place and it's a really important ley line area i guess and he calls it um i hope i'm pronouncing this right but i don't think i am but he calls it illidorian and he's talking about how its dreamer died and its dreamer was like Ronan because Ronan dreamt Cabe's water and dreamt Lind Lindenmere. He's their king, their protector, the protector. And Bride is explaining to him that the dreamer that dreamt Illidorian is dead and that Illidorian has been almost asleep for a while okay. he's saying he's trying to explain to Ronan to stop limiting himself in his dreams he keeps saying to Ronan and Hennessy to that that there's not there's a very fine line or there's no line for dreamers between being awake and being asleep so anyway there's this piece that I want to read out that I just think is really nice writing and it's just lovely so I is saying um saying to ronan given the opportunity to communicate with your family what do you do dream up phones and he's like disgusted by the fact that he dreams up phones that ronan dreams phones and then he says 
A human child believes all things are possible. How wonderful, how terrifying. Slowly, you are taught what you cannot have, what will not be possible, what you do not have to fear. There is no monster in the closet. You cannot fly. How relieving, how disappointing. But this is the world, isn't it? You believe it. You believe it so thoroughly that even when the box is lifted from around you, you continue to travel in circles no bigger than its walls. I'm not really sure what Bride is trying to get out of Hennessy and Ronan. All these sort of like lessons and things are really interesting. Yeah, I'm intrigued to know what's going to happen. Like I kind of, I feel like we're missing out on the action yet. I know I'm only 100 pages in, but I want the action to start happening. Like, and I don't like that everyone's apart from each other. Like Jordan's after leaving Declan and Matthew. Declan and Matthew were kind of like, mm, not really talking. Even though actually Declan and Matthew are going on a trip to Boston to see Jordan, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, they're kind of separated or in conflict, I guess. And Adam is nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be heard. Like, what is he up to? I know Mikey Seabotter put on her Instagram or her Twitter, I think. that She was like almost distracting us as the readers with everything that's happening with Ronan that we don't think about Adam. And I'm I'm thinking about Adam, okay? And I feel like he's in trouble. I'm not too bothered with, like, even in Call Down the Hawk, I didn't really care much for Carmen Fruk Lane. I think that's how you say her name. I'm not really interested in, in her plot line much. Like I was at the start, but now I'm not really like, <laughs> I'm just a bit bland, like. But anyway, I'm gonna keep reading. Okay, so I'm on page 154 and I just finished chapter 15 and I just want to say I'm very confused. Like not, I don't know how to explain why I'm confused, but I'm just confused. My head is a bit bending a little. I'm a bit like all over the place with where the timeline is. Like I'm not sure how things are happening. We haven't heard from Jordan in a good couple of chapters so I don't know what she's at um Declan and Matthew have gone to see Adam and then it keeps flicking back to the point of view of Carmen and the other moderators but I don't know I know that that's happening right now because the moderators and Bride and Hennessy and Ronan all like combine like their their timelines cross over but I'm still confused and I'm not really sure. I know everything's supposed to be like pretty chaotic and everything, but I'm halfway through the book now and I'm still like lost. Ronan's just after like almost dying, so. <laughs> chapter 21 and in the last chapter something happened that got me a bit confused i'm still kind of like i don't know my my brain is still kind of bending from everything that's happening but i feel like that's what it's supposed to do that's what this book is this book is just chaos in the best way but it is getting a bit tedious i want like the solution Basically, um, Carmen Farouk Lane, the one that I said earlier that I had really no interest in, and I didn't, but now she seems to be turning for the good side, which I always assumed would probably happen, because that's usually what happens when, when there's a specific person picked out and you hear from their point of view when they're on the bad side. There is this visionary that's been with her for practically all of the book now. Was, she was with her towards the end of the last book. All of a sudden, Farouk Lane is like, yeah, I'm gonna quit the moderators, which like good for her and that's good and everything. 
But then Liliana just kisses her randomly. I mean, I'm not saying I don't like it, but I'm just very confused. Because I thought Liliana like treated her as like, like a daughter almost. I don't know. It's very confusing because like Liliana changes ages a lot. So I feel like in my head, she's like a Persephone, but a different Persephone. Um, so she's like this old, whimsical, magical woman, but clearly not. <laughs> because I know she's she goes back and forth between ages. So sometimes she's like a teenager, sometimes she's 30s, and then sometimes she's older, like 60s. So I don't know. But I just thought it was quite abrupt and random and... I wasn't really expecting it at all. Like, I know they have, like, Liliana's always saying she'll follow her for a plane anywhere, blah, blah, blah. But I thought it was more of a, like, protection kind of maternal thing. But anyway, page 194, chapter 21. So I'm going to keep going. I don't have much left at all. Okay, I'll come back whenever I have another update. Okay, this isn't even that relevant, but... I just think it's very funny because I do this thing sometimes where I like skip over words if my brain isn't is being lazy right like everyone and they're referring to I think I mentioned it they're these art pieces and these things that are infused with a type of magic I guess you could call it that allows dreams and dreamers to stay awake separately so if a dream's dreamer dies so for example if Ronan died Matthew wouldn't be asleep the magic thing would help him stay awake if you get me and basically they're called sweet metals for some reason I was calling it in my head sweet meals like sweet meals instead of sweet metals I just totally skipped the tea <gasps> anyway. Tuesday and it's the morning after. It is like quite late in the day, it's about two o'clock. But last night I read up until page 216, which is chapter 23. Honestly, I, I think I the last time I updated was around when I stopped. Um I only have about a hundred and thirty pages left, I want to say. So that much. And I'm determined to finish it today. I just want to say at this point in the book, I'm kind of like, I've, I've probably said this already, but I'm kind of confused. Like last night I had to stop reading it because I was just, my head was just absolutely bending. Like my brain was broken. And I know that it's supposed to be like that. And it's supposed to be really chaotic and all over the place and everything like that. But I don't know. I'm just quite lost in where the timeline timelines are and everything. I, I think I've mentioned this I'm not sure but the timelines are quite in my head anyways all over the place and I'm not sure if things are happening at the same time as other things some some conversation or some event will happen and then because you go to the next chapter and it changes point of view I feel like that piece is kind of forgotten and I know it'll probably come up in other parts um, and hopefully it'll be resolved by the end yeah so I'm kind of just like I want the resolution now. I want to find out what they're going to do to fix everything. I'm going to go outside and read, I think. First off, can you excuse the hot? It's hot. <laughs> and the sun's in my eyes. Anyway. I just finished chapter 23 and I just want to say it was all about Declan and it was a lot of like inner monologue but I really like that he's evolving and his character is developing and he's figuring out and realizing for himself that he can be happy and he doesn't have to like make his life so structured and all based around keeping his family safe and doing everything safely but also I'm still like just it's quite all over the place especially that chapter 
Like, I don't know what's happening. Like, I do, but I don't. It seems like a lot of time has passed, but it's not really addressed. And I'm just very confused on the actual timeline and when certain events are happening. But I think it's going to start to pick up now on, like, the, you know, the way... Maggie Seaver does this thing at the end of all her books that when there's about this much left, there's always some drama that happens and everything starts to come together, but then it starts to fall apart, which is good and fun. So, okay, so I'm getting really close to the end now. I'm on page 312, which is chapter 34, and I only have like that bare little bit left, but Ronin is going insane. They're in this battle, well, they were in this battle where Declan and Adam and Farouk Lane as well were trying to kill Bride and then Hennessy stead back um Bride didn't get killed and Bride and Ronan are gone off now but Ronan doesn't actually want to do bad he's just so clouded in his focus of trying to follow Bride and everything's going to shit he rang Adam then he hung up on Adam because he knows Adam was in on the plan everything's all over the place anyway I only have like that tiny bit left so, hold on. What in the living hell is happening? Bride just said that Ronan dreamt him? What the fuck? I mean, that seems like an obvious thing. But, like, why would Ronan do that? What? Oh my god. So Ronan's been doing all this stuff. And it's not actually Bride he's been following. It's been himself. He's the person who will bring about the destruction of the world. Oh my god, what? <gasps> Bride says, why did you keep Adam out of your dreams? You were sure he would know. You wanted to pretend. And Adam has never trusted Bride. Oh my god. <gasps> no, Ronan's burning. He's gonna blow everything up. Oh no, Ronan, what are you doing? Oh my god, the moderators were bloody dreamt. And that's the end. What? I am so confused. What? Okay, I need to gather my thoughts. Okay, so I finished Mr. Impossible. And honestly, I have, like, no words. I'm really shocked and like baffled and I feel like my brain is split into a million pieces and they can't find their way back. I really don't even know how to describe what I think about the like how to express my thoughts. I'm gonna start by saying I enjoyed it. I did. Even though I was confused at a lot of points and I'm still very confused right now, it was fun. And like all of Maggie Seabutter's works that I've read anyway. It was about characters I love and like magic. And it just feels like magic. And it feels like opportunity and all the things you can't even fathom. I loved that we got to know more about Jordan and Hennessy and Matthew and all the separate characters personally. So I, I like that we got to learn a lot more about them in depth by themselves. Yeah, however, like I've said many times now, the timeline I felt like was quite all over the place and I was quite confused about what was happening at what time. But that kind of makes sense with how it ends considering 
it was supposed to be all over the place. It's chaotic. Like, um, yeah, I'm really intrigued to see how this series is going to wrap up. I know I'm going to have to wait like a year for the next book to come out, but the way it ended there, I actually don't even know how that's going to be resolved. Like, I feel like nothing was resolved in it at all. Not one thing, except for maybe Jordan staying awake. How? Does that mean she infused a sweet metal inside herself when she painted Declan? Or is Declan her sweet metal? Very confused. But I think I might rate this maybe four stars. It, I don't think it deserves a five star because it was quite confused and I'm still quite confused. But yeah, four stars, I think, because I did really enjoy reading it. And I obviously love all these characters and the whole idea of it is just really intriguing and fun i guess that's the end of my vlog i know it probably made no sense but honestly i feel like my brain made no sense while reading that this um and i also read it in i think just under 48 hours so that's the end of this video i guess i hope you liked it that's all subscribe if you want